Sometimes I get indications that future actuaries don't fully understand the importance of becoming a top candidate if they want to get an actuarial job and be successful in the field. A common mistake I often see them make is that they're kind of not really sure what they need to do in order to get noticed by employers. They usually end up passing a bunch of exams thinking that that is what is going to impress employers. And honestly, that makes total sense because exams is really all you hear about when it comes to the actuarial career. But then when those same people go to apply for jobs, they often end up feeling discouraged and demotivated and surprised because employers aren't showing the interest in them that they thought they would. It kind of makes me want to bang my head against a wall because I have emphasized this so many times. Well, in this video, we're going to look at four real entry-level actuarial job posts so that you can get a sense of how important it really is to become a top candidate if you want to get an actuarial job. Trust me, most of your peers will stay down here, but if you want to rise above the competition, get way more interviews, and drastically increase your chances of actually landing an actuarial job, then you need to stand out from the competition by becoming a top candidate. I'm Bria, associate of the Society of Actuaries and founder of the Actuary Accelerator community, where we train future actuaries how to become top candidates and get their actuarial dream job all without an internship. Okay, let's jump into post number one. Okay, now when I say top actuarial candidate, basically this describes someone that has a bachelor's degree, someone that has great technical skills, someone that has related experience, someone that has excellent communication skills, and someone that has passed two to three actuarial exams. And that's basically what you should be striving to achieve. Now let's look at how a top candidate would measure up for this job posting. Okay, so for this one, if we go to the qualifications, they are looking for someone with a bachelor's degree, they are looking for someone with an internship or relevant experience, they are looking for someone with at least two actuarial exams. They want someone with excellent technical skills, Excel, VBA, SQL is mentioned here. And they are looking for someone with basic insurance concept knowledge. This is not something that I see on all job postings, but if it is something that the employer is looking for and you are a member of the AAC, head to the intermediate candidate resources of the Actuary Accelerator community, then scroll down to module three, because this is where we train you on all the actuarial terminology and concepts that employers may need you to know. In this job post, they're also looking for someone with excellent communication skills. So it explicitly says here, excellent written and verbal skills. Okay, now let's move on to job number two. So in this one, if we go to the qualifications, they are looking for someone with technical skills. It mentions programming and data analysis here. It mentions SAS. So that all falls under technical skills. They are looking for someone with advanced math, probability, and statistic knowledge. Now in this particular job posting, they don't mention a bachelor's degree at all. However, almost every single employer is going to actually require that whether they state it on their job posting or not. So it is a really important thing for you to have a bachelor's degree. It doesn't necessarily have to be in actuarial science or math or statistics. It can be in anything. Now, the thing is here, if you have a bachelor's degree that is related to the actuarial career, then you're going to have this background knowledge that they are looking for. And you'd also get that in actuarial exams that you've taken. So this one's pretty much covered under the top candidate criteria. They are also looking for someone that has preferably at least one actuarial exam passed and they're looking for someone with great, actually superior communication skills and teamwork skills. Now, about six months ago now, I did a study of 100 entry-level actuarial job posts, and I found that 74% of actuarial employers mentioned specifically in their job posts that they wanted someone with excellent communication skills. So this is something to definitely focus your time on. If you are a member of the Actuary Accelerator community, head to the rising candidate phase of the actuarial journey so that you can learn some communication skills and start practicing those. Okay, now let's move on to job post number three. And by the way, if this video has been helpful for you so far, could you please give it a thumbs up so that it can spread to more future actuaries that need to know this information? Thank you so, 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 so much. Okay, so for job post number three, let's look at the expertise and the preferred experience and technical skills section of the job post. So here we're seeing that they want someone with a degree in a whole bunch of different options they have here, but they do want that bachelor's degree. They're also looking for someone with communication skills that are very effective. 
Um, and then if we move down here to this preferred experience and technical skills section, we see that they are looking for someone with zero to three years of experience and someone with an internship in healthcare insurance or the actuarial field. Now, a few things I want to emphasize here. I have talked about stepping stone positions over and over again on this channel, and that is a great way to meet this qualification of getting related experience. In that study of 100 entry-level actuarial job posts that I told you about earlier, I found that if an employer mentioned that they wanted related experience, then on average they expected about 0.5 or half a year of experience related to the actuarial career. Now, in this specific position, it does mention an internship. I am 100% sure that if you have a stepping stone position that is related to healthcare insurance or the actuarial field, then that is also going to cover this qualification. In this job post, they are also looking for technical skills. They mention strong Excel skills, and they also mention some programming languages. Okay, now let's move on to job number four. So if we go to the expectations or the qualifications for this this specific job, we are looking at experience in a four-year college program. So basically that's your bachelor's degree. They're looking for zero to two years of industry experience. Stepping stone position would definitely cover this. They are looking for at least two exams passed from the Society of Actuaries. So a top candidate would definitely have that. They are looking for someone with experience with SAS or other programming. Now, this falls under technical skills. In the study I did of entry-level actuarial job posts, I found that about 64% of actuarial employers preferred someone that had a programming knowledge. So if you are someone that is in the AAC, the Actuary Accelerator community, and working towards becoming a top candidate, then you're going to want to head to the rising candidate phase because this is where we recommend that you learn your programming skills so you'll pass module one that's all about excel but head to module two that's where you're going to learn a programming language in this position they are also looking for someone with strong communication skills so for this specific example they are actually pretty much looking specifically for a top candidate okay so after going through these job posts with me i hope you fully understand and see the importance of becoming a top actuarial candidate as a top actuarial candidate it's almost inevitable that you will be able to get a job, it's just a matter of time. You saw in all these job posts that a top candidate would be eligible for all of them, and these were not specially hand-selected. These were basically the first four entry-level actuarial job postings that I found. So with that being said, what is your next step? What are you going to do so that you can get closer to becoming a top actuarial candidate and rise above the competition? If you didn't notice, all four of those job posts required someone that knew a programming language. So maybe for you, that's your next step and if that's the case make sure you go watch this video next where I explain five programming languages that any future actuary should know and I even give you some insight into projects I completed in my actuarial career using each of the programming languages I talk about. That's all for this week. I will see you next Tuesday. Bye for now.